Hi everyone, how are you? I hope that you are ready to start our English lesson and get now some new grammar useful for you. Our topic for today is models, models in the past. I'll explain how should you use them, in which situation and uh, what can they mean during while you're speech. So be attentive and uh, let's see. At the first slide, of course, I, it's an introductive slide. I explain some information about models. Uh, models, in general, they may express ability, possibility. So in present and in the past, as I mentioned before, we are going to talk past models. Uh, let's be attentive, because here I fixed some table in order to give you more clear just imagination about these models so first column is the verb itself the second is concept and of course example you cannot get now something new without examples so the first example is would have would have is past unreal action in past unreal action you may express just some dreams some dreams that didn't uh, come true in your life so anyway something that is connected with past could have uh, the same with the first one but here you just talk like in general way about some things may have it's like possibility you just also imagine that something could happen in a little more different way Next one is might have, well, past unreal and absolutely small probability, almost never. Well, should have, it's like a recommendation that could be organized in the past, that could mm, happen in your life in the past, but you didn't follow some recommendation. And must have some assumption that also could be in the past. So some examples, of course, I recommend you, I insist on your reading and let's go on to the next slide. So uh, should have, could have and would have. So in order to understand these model verbs, just look at the picture, look at this girl and you will understand. So she's dreaming about some past, about some past events. She didn't turn something into the life. That's why now she's just have some regrets about um, these dreams and that is all. So for this purpose you should use for uh, your verbs like should have, could have and of course would have in order to express some regret. Well, should have. Should have may be used also with some verb after it, uh, verb uh, three, past participle, and of course such kind of structure may be expressed when you mention some um, condition. By the way, this structure is used in the third type of conditional sentences. In the main clause, when you would like to express why something didn't happen or how some situation could be developed. Well, could have. Could have uh, also could happen in the past. So you're talking about some general situation. You do not mean some particular, you just mean something in general in comparing with some other words. So if plus had plus past participle, as I told you before, is a structure of the third type of conditional sentences. That's why when you regret about something or when you characterize the third type of conditionals, you may say that something happened in the past. So would have. In comparing with could have, would have is more concrete. So, if you say would have, it means that you could take some job, you would have started something new, and so on. You may see some examples here, please read them. I recommend you in order to understand, in order to see the difference more briefly between could have and would have. 
So here you may see also some differences between would have and could have. So let's read some example. For example, if I had worked harder, I could have got a promotion. It means if he were some um, more hardworking person, who, uh, he could get some really more great result and so on. So some regret about the past that cannot be turned into the life. We cannot return some past tense and uh, turn something into the life. Well, didn't have to and didn't need to. We mean some necessity of doing something. Here you may see some examples like I didn't uh, need to wake up because something something. So you shouldn't get go somewhere or so uh, some other reasons. Anyway, you may express some situation that gives you a chance not to do something. There is no necessity. You are not obligated to do something. Well, needn't have. Here you talk about past. About past, which is like a regret, like we were talking in the third type of conditional sentences. Of course, you shouldn't uh, differentiate previous structure and this one too much. But anyway, in the previous one, it's like more general situation and you mean just simple past, past moment. But here you mean that action is done, you have some result and you cannot change something. Result is ready. Well, and here you may see some examples. The most interesting part of our topic, how should you use some structures? How should you use some models in the past? The first, let's pay attention to the situations and correct sentences, how models should be used. For example, he didn't need to or needn't have taken his umbrella with him. So, no necessity. In some past time, uh, there was not rain. That's why it wasn't necessary for him. Next situation, please, and look at correct sentence. I mean, your example that you should follow in your speech, in your mind, you should remember. I didn't have to wait or needn't to have waited and I didn't have to pay or needn't have paid for my last uh, fast pass. Sorry. So it means that in the past we had some result. Result is uh, uh, actually we have, we may face with our result, but nothing can be changed. So, and situation number three, example number three, that is also should be mentioned. So look please. I didn't need to set or needn't have set my alarm clock. It means that also uh, no necessity. So please follow these rules, follow uh, key moments. Uh, how should you use model verbs and you made your speech more interesting and more correct and more understandable for native speakers even. So have a good day. Bye, see you.